All right, let's work a couple of examples of uh, partial fractions. So our first example is going to be when you have a situation where you have a higher degree numerator uh, than or higher degree numerator than the denominator, higher or equal to. In either case, you need to first divide. So we're going to take the top divided by the bottom. So what do you get here? All right, so remember how we do polynomial long division. You got x squared um, plus 3x plus 1, and we're going to divide that by, but remember, you have to take into account every power of x, so x squared plus 0x minus 4 divided by the bottom. Uh, let's get a little thin pen going. Okay, so we ask ourselves, uh, well, when you do long division, You've got one, two, three things here. So one, two, three things here. It's gonna, whatever I put on top, I'm gonna multiply by, and I want to make this first expression, x squared, uh, go away or add to zero. So what I'm gonna multiply the, the thing I'm dividing by by so that one x squared subtracts away. Well, if you take one and multiply it by x squared out here, you're gonna get x squared. And then as you continue to distribute, you're going to get plus 0x minus 4, respectively. I think that the parentheses here really help when you do the subtraction to see that it's x squared on top minus x squared, yep. So that goes away to 0x squared, just like we wanted it to. And yeah, it doesn't much matter when you're adding or subtracting 0, but technically that would be positive times negative, so it would be minus 0x. So positive 3x, negative 0x gives us positive 3x. But over here is where you have to be careful. Negative times negative gives you positive 4. So this is really positive 1 plus 4 for plus 5. And what that tells us is that tells us that our fraction that is our integrand, x squared plus 3x plus 1 all over x squared minus 4 is the same thing as 1 plus the remainder. Just a real quick aside. 13 divided by 4, uh, go, uh, 4 goes into 13 three times, 12, you want to subtract to get rid of that first guy, remainder 1. This tells us that um, 13 fourths is the same thing as 3 and 1 fourth, which is really 3, think of a tape measure, plus 1 fourth. So what you get when you divide plus the remainder over what you divided by, well, that would look like our remainder, 3x plus 5, over what we divided by x squared minus 4. So our whole integral, I'm going to put use my circle star, so our entire integral becomes, our integral becomes integral of, well, 1 plus 3x plus 5 over x squared minus 4. And you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and break that up. Uh, use the property of integrals that you can break it up over addition to uh, split it up like that. Now this we can do, you know, no big deal. That's just x. But this is going to require partial fractions. So let's do that on the next slide. Um, so, so far we've got x plus, I know I've already used circle stars, so let's use two circle stars to represent this integral. And we'll come back for this guy later, but don't forget him. So much so that we better highlight him so we remember. All right, on to the next slide for a little more room. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to do partial fractions on this expression that we have. Well, it's 3x plus 5 all over, well, x squared minus 4 factors as x plus 2 and x minus 2. And that gives us two linear factors, so we're going to break it up as x plus 2 um, plus our next fraction is uh, x minus 2. I don't know why I put b there. Apologies. What do we got? Well, we need our, uh, we need our, uh, our variables, expressions that go over our linear factors. We need a and we need b. OK, so now what are we going to do? Well, we need to figure out what a and b are. And to do that, we're going to times both sides of this expression by x plus 2 and x minus 2 and then have things reduce away. Um, same. Just save us a little bit of writing. x plus 2. I suppose I should do it mine correctly here. So left side, all that's going to reduce away. We're going to be left with just 3x plus 5. 
On the right side, the x minus two or x plus two is going to reduce away to leave a times x minus two, and the x minus two is going to reduce away from the b expression to leave us with b times x plus two. All right, so what do we got here? Well, I'm going to now I'm going to figure out what these coefficients of a and b are going to be. I'm going to choose x is equal to two, and forgive me, sorry about that. Okay, so. I'm going to choose x equals 2, and that's going to give us 3 times 2 plus 5 is equal to, well, 2 minus 0 is going to make it a times 0, so we're going to get rid of that guy. We don't have to worry about him. Plus 2 plus 2 is going to give us b times 4. So this, if you solve this out, this leads to 4b is equal to 6 plus 5 is 11, and so we have that b is equal to 11 fourths. I'm going to circle that because we may use it later. Oh, well, we're going to use it later. That's the whole point. x is equal to negative 2. Well, that, when we plug into the b expression, will leave us with just an a. So 3 times negative 2 plus 5 is equal to a times negative 4. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. Plus b times negative 2 plus 2 is 0. That just that works. And so we end up here with negative 1 equals a times negative 4. And that gives us that a is equal to 1 fourth. All right, so let's go back and say back to our integrand. Uh, and to do that, since I should have given myself an extra slide here, so our integral it becomes, um, well, we had x uh, plus, we broke this thing up into 3x plus 5 over x squared minus 4 is now the equivalent using these coefficients of two integrals, the integral of a over x plus 2, and a is 1 fourth, so I'm going to leave it as 1 fourth over x plus 2 dx, plus my second one, b over x minus 2, well, b is 11 fourths over x minus 2 dx. And so those are both straightforward to do. They're both going to be natural logarithms and just you know, taking that one fourth on top and factoring it out, you're going to get one fourth uh, times the natural log of x plus two um, plus eleven fourths times the natural log of x minus two. And don't forget your plus c. And we've done it. We've integrated the entire thing. We had to divide the numerator by the denominator to reduce the degree on top, and then we get something we can use partial fractions for. So there's our first example. Um, our second example is partial fractions after a u substitution. Well, I see sine and then I see its derivative of cosine. So let's set up a quick u substitution. Let's make u equal to sine of x. And then du is equal to cosine of x dx. So there's du directly. So I'm going to do a direct substitution here. And a direct substitution is going to give us uh, 1 over u squared minus u du. And so that seems pretty reasonable, but we can't do that, not directly. So we're going to have to do partial fractions here. So we'll stick a pin in this and come back to our actual integral later. But let's do partial fractions on 1 over u squared minus u. Well, how do you factor that? That's 1 over u times u minus 1. So we have two linear factors. So we're going to get a over u plus b over u minus 1. OK. And now we think to ourselves, OK, we're going to multiply both sides of this expression. And I know this isn't technically correct notation, but we're just going to let it slide here u times u minus 1, multiply both, both sides of the expression there. Well, on the left, everything's going to reduce away. We're going to be left with just 1. And a, the u is going to reduce, so we're going to be left with a times u minus 1. And then for b, the u minus 1 is going to reduce away, and we're going to be left with b times just u. So we can choose now. We can choose u to be anything we want to. And first, we're going to choose u to be 0. And that'll kind of get rid of that b expression. That'll give us 1 equals to a times negative 1 plus 
well, b times zero is just gone. So let's just let that guy go. That's why we chose zero. And that's going to tell us that a is equal to negative one. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to get rid of, we got rid of the b term last time. Let's get rid of the a term this time. u is equal to one will give us one minus one, a times zero. So that I got this one equals u one minus one gives us a times zero. So that's gone. So we just need to take this b times one and that's going to give us b equals one. Okay, so now we're ready to return to our integrand. And so our integral becomes under this partial fraction decomposition, a over u negative one over u du plus integral of one b over u minus one. So one over u minus one du. And both of these are things we can do. And so the first one is going to give us negative ln of absolute value of u. The second one, you could do a second u substitution. And I encourage you to do this. Uh, as we did in the last time, I kind of left out the, the u subs at the end of the integrating. But this is going to, our second term is going to give us ln of uh, absolute value of u minus 1 and absolute value plus c. And we're done, except for our result is in terms of u, and our original integral is in terms of x. So we better reverse our substitution. Up here, we have u is equal to sine of x. So we better reverse that substitution to get negative ln of sine of x plus ln of sine of x minus 1 and parentheses plus c. And we've managed to check this one off as well. So I gave myself two slides on that one and didn't need it. So our last type of example here is one where we have uh, x to the third power. Um, partial fractions with an expression that involves quadratic. So I'm going to just go ahead and tell you that x to the third minus 8 is the same thing as x to the third minus 2 to the third. And there's this formula for the difference of cubes. And it factors as, so let's just tell us that factors as 1 over x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4, end parenthesis, dx. And so now, let's see here. This thing looks like it factors, but careful, it doesn't actually factor. So we're stuck with it. And so this integral becomes equals to, um, when we write it out as uh, partial fraction decomposition, our first fraction is going to be a linear, have a linear denominator of x minus 2. So we'll put just a constant a on it. And our second fraction that's added together, we're going to have our quadratic denominator, x squared plus 2x plus 4. So we need a linear bx plus c factor on, or expression on the top. OK, so now same game as we have been doing this whole time. You're going to take both sides of your partial fraction decomposition, and you're going to times them by the denominators. And that's going to leave you with um, 1 is equal to a times the other denominator, x squared plus 2x plus 4 plus bx plus c times the other denominator that won't reduce away the x minus 2. So this one requires quite a bit more work, but nothing we can't handle here. So let's just kind of distribute things out and see what we get. 1 is equal to ax squared plus twice ax plus 4a. Um, multiplying out bx plus c times x minus 2 is going to give us plus bx squared minus 2bx plus cx minus 2c. OK, so what can we do here? Well, I find it helpful in this case to kind of group everything together in terms of x squared and x and just constants. So let me rewrite the right-hand side of this expression. The right-hand side of this expression in blue is equal to, we'll group the a the uh, x squared term. So we'll have a and b. So we're going to have a plus b 
times x squared, factoring out the x squared and grouping them together. Now all the x expressions, well, there are three of them. We've got this one and this one and this one. So factoring out an x, we're going to get 2a plus or minus 2b plus c times x. And now our constant expression, we are left with 4a and negative 2c. So I'm going to write that as plus 4a minus 2c is, and then this is a little bit weird, but I've got a 1 on the right-hand side, so I'm going to write 1 over here, and we'll make them look similar so we can tell that they're related. So why does this help us? Well, I have to match coefficients to the right side of the expression to the left side. Well, the left side doesn't have an x squared or an x expression, but that's not stopping us from giving them one. I could make the x expression plus 0x, and I could make the x squared expression 0x squared. Now I can see that, let's use some colors here, 0 has to be the same as a plus b, and uh, 2a minus 2b plus c has to be the same as 0, because they're in front of x squared and x respectively. And last but not least, my constant expression of 1 has to be equal to 4a minus 2c. So that's going to give us three equations that we can work with. So in green, we've got 0 equals a plus b. On the left and the right, I'm keeping the left hand of our original expression and the right hand of our original expression on the left and the right of the system of equations that we're about to get. So 0 on the left is related to, for the x expression, the 2a minus twice b plus c expression on the right. And then last but not least, our constant expression is 1 on the left is equal to 4a minus 2c. I don't need to bring that along that 1. That 1 was mostly there to help us see what was related from left to right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I see a bunch of things here. But I see that if I take this green expression, I can right away express a in terms, or rather, b in terms of negative a. Subtract a from both sides. Why is that helpful? Well, I can replace this b with this b, and then these two resulting equations would be in terms of only a and c, and I can solve that. So let's do that here. So I'm going to use my first uh, b is equal to negative a, and I'm going to put it into this red expression. That's going to give me 0 is equal to 2a minus 2 times negative a plus c. And so that gives me, tidying up and just collecting like terms, 4a, 0 is equal to 4a, and 0 is equal to 4a plus c. Okay, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with that. Now for the black expression, we've got 1 is equal to, well, there's nothing to do here. You know what? I'm going to take this all the way over here. 1 is equal to 4a minus 2c. Now if you remember some old algebra tricks, you could, you've got a system of equations here with two variables and two unknowns, so we can actually solve that. I'm going to need a little bit more room to do that. So let's uh, give ourselves a little bit more room. Uh, there we go. We'll keep it like this so we can see it. We'll do it over there. OK, so there we go. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. I think uh, a nice way to do it would be to just go ahead and multiply our bottom expression by a negative 1. And that gives us negative 1 is equal to negative 4a plus 2c. And then leave our top expression alone. 0 is equal to 4a plus c. And then you can actually add these two things together to get a new expression. OK, so that adds to 0. That was the reason we took the top one times negative 1. And we're going to get negative 1 is equal to 3c, which is going to give us that c is equal to negative 1 third. So we're just, you could have also done this by solving for c here. c is equal to negative 4a, and then substituting that into this second expression. You'll come up with the same conclusion in either way you slice it. So c is equal to negative 1 third. So there we go. We've got a number. And then 
we can uh, just work our way back through using back substitution to come up with the other ones. Well, I'm going to choose to put this into my red expression from above. And into my red expression of above, I got 0 is equal to 4a plus my negative 1 thirds for c. Solve that out. And I'll leave the algebra for this to you because if you can all handle that here. And you're going to come up with that a is equal to 1 12th. A useful thing, so we'll put that in there. Now you're going to take both of these expressions and put them back into anything that involves b. I might suggest putting it into the green expression, which we can still see up here. Sorry about that. Uh, whoops, sorry about that. Get out of here. Cancel. We're still going, right? Yeah, sure. I'll just click it again. OK, so I might suggest putting it into this negative b equals a. Well, negative b equals a, or b equals negative a and vice versa, it tells us right away that the b expression is equal to negative 1 12th. Whew, that was a bit. But now we're ready to put all of this together. And we're ready to say, all right, let's take a look back at our old integral. Our old integral had a over x minus 2. And then the second integral was bx plus c over the quadratic expression. So our integral, uh, we didn't stick a pin in it. So to be technically true and easier to follow, let's stick a pin in it and come back to it. OK, I guess I could have just written it over here as well. So pin in it equals our original thing, but our original thing is going to be rewritten as integral of a, which is 1 over 12, 1 over 12 over my x minus 2 dx expression plus integral of bx plus c over my quadratic expression x squared plus 2x plus 4 dx and then b, remember this was, this expression was bx plus c, so b is negative 1 12th times x, and then plus my c expression, which was negative 1 third. So I got 1 negative 12th x minus 1 third on top there. Now, I'm going to stop here, equals dot dot dot, and I'm going to say, see the open text, open stacks text, because this example ends up kind of going off the rails a little bit and ends up needing completing the square to integrate our second integral there. And so I will tell you that this was example 3.3.4, so in, in the textbook, but I'll leave it to you if you want to see what the actual result of that is.